Do you know the fastest wind speed recorded comes from the Hurricane Olivia in April 10, 1996, which recorded winds of around 254 miles per hour, which is about one third of the speed of the sun. Welcome to the Wind Tunnel 1 and 2 experiment. My name is Michel Martinez, and let's get into some background information before we start our lab. So what is pressure? From a fluid's point of view, pressure is a measurement of the force per unit area of an object in the fluid or on the surface of a closed container. This pressure can be caused by gravity, acceleration, or by forces outside of a closed container. Since a fluid has no definite shape, its pressure will apply in all directions. So there's two main types of pressures that we can measure in this lab. We have our static pressure and our total pressure. Our static pressure is a pressure that will be measured by an instrument moving with the flow. It is measured by an opening that is perpendicular to the flow. This pressure is also known as the bursting pressure and is a pressure that is being exerted on the dog sidewalls. On the other hand, the total pressure is the sum of the two pressures, a static and velocity pressure, and is measured by placing an opening directly facing the flow. But how do we measure these pressures? We're going to be using something that is called a pitot tube, and it encompasses a specific class of instruments that measure fluid pressures, and there's three basic types of them. You have your pitot tube, which measures the total pressure, your static tube, that measures static pressure, and your pitot-static tube, which measures simultaneously the total and the static pressure in moving fluids. Once we have both the total and the static pressure, we can use these two parameters to calculate the velocity pressure, and from there we can find the velocity of the air inside the wind tunnel. Another instrument that we'll be using this lab is the manometer. And the manometer is a device that indicates the pressure difference between two points by the offsetting height of a liquid. Over here you can see we have a U manometer, and it's one of the simplest manometers there are. On this device, it usually doesn't matter which side is connected to the higher pressure point. However, when calculating the pressure difference, the total distance between the left and the right liquid levels must be used, which is usually double the reading on the built-in ruler. The manometer you see on the screen right now, it's an incline manometer, and it's one of the most accurate manometers we have in the lab. On this type of manometer, readings are directly read from the built-in ruler. It is very important, however, that the higher pressure point be connected to the appropriate side of this type of manometer, which is usually the non-reservoir side or the incline side, the left side, of the manometer. It is customary to record the pressure readings in whatever scale is marked on the manometer. The scale that we'll be using in this lab is the inches of water or water columns, so make sure you're writing the correct units when working and doing your calculations. Another important concept that we need to cover is the conservation of mass, which states that the mass flow rate on the inlet must equal the mass flow rate on the outlet, as seen from the equation. Since air is relatively incompressible at the pressures and temperatures in the lab, this equation can be reduced to the following. Velocity 1 times area 1 equals velocity 2 times area 2, or volume flow rate 1 equals volume flow rate 2. Therefore, if the area decreases, the velocity must increase. Moving now to the background for wind tunnel 2, we need to cover the Bernoulli equation, which relates the pressure, elevation, and velocity of a fluid along a streamline. For an incompressible fluid, the equation is as follows. Since in this experiment, the inlet and outlet of the wind tunnel are at the exact same height, we can cancel the terms Z1 and Z2. Since we have gravity on both sides of the equation, and since gravity is not changing, we can cancel that term and it will leave us with the following equation. Now, if we assume that the air starts outside of the duct at zero velocity, meaning V1 will be equal to zero, and that the density remains fairly constant, we can calculate the velocity achieved inside the duct by the change in pressure. Therefore, the equation is as follows. And after some rearranging, we can use this equation to find the velocity of the air inside the duct. After some substitution of terms, we have the following equation. Velocity is equal to 66.65 times the square root of the pressure reading in inches of water. This will give us units of feet per second. 
Once we have the velocity, the volumetric flow rate can be calculated simply by multiplying the average velocity times the cross-sectional area of the duct. The procedures for the wind tunnel 1 are the following. After turning on the fan and the power, install the convergent divergent duct as shown. Connect the hoses with the T's to the proper manometers shown. We're going to be using manometers 5, 6, and 9. Make note that in manometer 5, we're connecting both sides of the manometer. We're using the high and the low side. While with manometer 6 and 9, we're only connecting to the lower side. Turn on the fan to 70. Place the pitot tube to hole 1 and adjust it so the tip is centered. After recording the pressure, repeat the step through hole number 2 all the way through hole number 10. You also need to find the calculated velocity pressure. You will be getting this value by subtracting the static pressure reading from the total pressure reading. This value must be close to the velocity pressure gotten from another 5. For wind tunnel 2, turn on the fan and the power. Install the straight duct as shown. Connect the hoses to the proper manometer. In this case, we're only using manometer 5. Insert the probe and center it. For the first part, set the fan to each speed and record the pressure. For the second part, leave the fan at speed 80 and move the probe up and down in 2 cm steps, taking readings at each of these points. I recommend to start from the bottom and then move its way all the way up. 